Welcome to Ontario Power Generation's SAP Ariba support channel. On this channel, you'll find lots of helpful instructional videos about how to onboard with OPG, how to locate your purchase orders, and how to submit invoices. But in this video, I'm going to go through some basic navigation of the SAP Ariba system, and I'll show you all of the primary functions you'll need in order to do business with Ontario Power Generation through the platform. So let's start off by getting to SAP Ariba. We can start by going to supplier.ariba.com. If you've forgotten your username or password, you can click on the links below in order to resend those details to your email address on file. Once you've entered in your username and password, let's go ahead and click in login. So there's two applications to SAP Ariba. There's the business network, and this is where you're going to do a lot of your administration tasks. This is where you're going to locate all of your purchase orders. And this is where you're going to submit all of your invoices. Now, there's also a section called Ariba Proposals and Questionnaires. And in that module, you're going to locate all of your requests for quotations, requests for proposals. And that's where you're going to submit your bids to the RFP events that OPG sends to you. So for now, let's just stick with the SAP Business Network. So some administration details up front. On the top right-hand corner, you will see your user profile with your initials in it. If you click here, you'll see the account that you use to log in. You'll also see your ANID, your Ariba Network account number, essentially. And this number is just critical when you're working with OPG, just to ensure that we're sending our purchase orders and our RFPs to your correct account. Okay. The one thing I want to bring you towards is the settings option. So if we click on settings, we're going to start by jumping into our users settings. Now in our users profile, we'll take note of the two tabs up top. The first tab is manage roles. Now a role is just a group of permissions that we assign to users. What I like to do with all of our new suppliers is to create a new role. So to do that, we're going to click on the plus on the right hand side. We're going to create a role called all access. Okay. And once we have that name in there, we're going to assign all of the permissions. And what this is going to do is when you tie new users in your company to this role, they'll have all of the permissions to locate orders, submit invoices, and they won't have a limited profile. So we're going to click on save. Okay. The next tab we're going to use is the manage users tab. So here's where we're going to see all of the users that are tied to this ANID. And to add a new user, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to click on the plus, fill out the username details. And what I like to do here for best practice is to use the same username as the email address. And then below, we're going to assign the all access role to this user account. And when we do that, when the new profiles created, that user will be able to have the full access credentials. Now, if you have any more questions about this process, I will include a link in the description below of a video that walks through this process a little more in depth, but I just wanted to highlight this at a high level of where we go to add new users and to ensure those users have correct access. The next setting I wanted to show you is, so again, we're gonna to go to our initials in the top right-hand corner. We're gonna click on settings and we're gonna head over to electronic order routing. Now in these settings, we get to determine which email addresses receive notifications when new purchase orders are sent to your Ariba profile. So we can see in this field here, we have two users separated by a comma. So both Troy and this Express Center email address are gonna get notifications when a new order is submitted. You can have multiple users, just separate them with a comma, and then be sure to copy these details and look throughout the document to ensure that every open text field is populated with those same users. That way everybody's getting notifications of new orders.
One more setting that I wanted to bring to your attention is the contract administrator function. So if we click on this setting, we will see who the administrator of the account is. And if we wanted to make changes to our administrator, we can go back into settings. We'll jump back into users. And under our users, we'll see some actions to make another account an administrator if the original account is no longer working in Ariba. One last setting that I wanted to bring to your attention is the service subscriptions settings. Now, there are two types of Ariba accounts. We have a standard account, which is a free account, and we have an enterprise account, which is the paid subscription feature. Now, to do business with Ontario Power Generation, we do not require any of our suppliers to upgrade to the enterprise account. Majority of our suppliers use the standard free features and it's perfectly acceptable to do business with Ontario Power Generation because the standard account allows you to locate your orders and to submit your invoices. So there's, there's really no need on our side to push our suppliers to upgrade to that enterprise account. Here's where you're going to see all of your subscription details. You'll see any outstanding payments that are tied to your account. You'll also see some options to add credit cards and to pay those membership fees. You also see below a breakdown of the different subscription fees and how to upgrade and compare subscriptions if you're interested in that. But again, to do business with OPG, you don't have to upgrade to the enterprise account. The standard account is, is completely acceptable to do business with us. So the next big feature I'm going to show you is the workbench tab. And in the workbench tab, this is where you're going to locate all of your orders. And this is where you're going to submit your invoices to OPG. So we'll start off by clicking on your workbench tab. And you may see this screen up that says you don't have any tiles. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the customize button. And here's where we can add new tiles that we want to see. So in this example, I want to see orders. I want to see some new orders, and I want to see my invoices. And when that's done, I'm going to click apply. And here we'll see the tiles have populated with some information. The default date on every tile is going to display all of your orders that have been sent to you in the past 31 days. Now to change this, we're going to go into the edit filter button and we can change the creation date to a different field. We can use 365 days or we can use a custom date range if you want to look in the past. In my experience, the best way to find an Ontario Power Generation purchase order is to change the order number to exact match and to type in the order number that you're looking for. I'll use an example here. This will eliminate that whole date criteria and you'll be able to search for all of your orders, whether they're five, 10, 15 years ago, they'll pull up automatically. Okay, so we see here, I searched for my purchase order and I had three different options pop up with the same number. And it's a little confusing when you see that some of the order statuses are obsolete. So let's just jump in quickly to the settings and let's drag over the version number. And when we do this, it'll paint a better picture. We can see that the original purchase order was sent on January 5th, okay? And then version one was sent a month later on February 6th. And then lastly, version two was sent on March 28th. When you're trying to submit an invoice for these purchase orders, you can only submit an invoice on the most recent version of the order. So if we dive into version zero or version one of the order, the ones that are obsoleted, we won't be able to submit an invoice. That, that option will be grayed out. So it's always best practice just to jump into the most recent version of the purchase order. And here we're just gonna see some basic details about the order. You're gonna see the order amount over here. On the left-hand side, you're gonna see the contact information from the OBG purchase order representative that created and sent you the order. So if you ever need to contact them directly, their email address and phone number are right here. Scrolling below, we're gonna see the standards and procedures, the terms and conditions that are attached to this order. Now they're available here through the hyperlinks and you can click on each one 
to get a better understanding of, of what that clause entails. In this instance, we'll click on the invoice clause and we will see all of our invoice details. If we scroll down below, we will see the details of the purchase order, the line item and the unit price and the subtotal. That's all available through the line items. Now at the top of the screen, you'll see three options to create an order confirmation, to create a shipping notice and to create an invoice. Creating an order confirmation is just sending a notification to OPG that you're confirming the order. Now in this field, you'll be able to include any attachments. So if you have any technical drawings or technical specifications or any documents that you need to attach to the order, you can do so during the order confirmation. The same can be done with the shipping notice. You're providing us details that you've shipped the product. You can include the weight of the item. You can include your tracking number. There's also the ability to include documents and attachments to that shipping notice as well. And lastly, we have the create invoice button. Now I will leave links in the descriptions to the specific videos of how to create an order confirmation, how to create an invoice. So you can take a look at those processes individually in more depth, but they're very straightforward. It should take you about three, four minutes to each process. Ariba has really laid these out simple for our users. Okay. Lastly, on the right hand side, you'll see a section for related documents. Now, once you create an order confirmation or a shipping notice or an invoice, you will see a copy of those documents on the right hand side under the related documents. So you can reference those in the future. So at a high level, this is everything we need to know about the SAP business network. We've looked at our settings. We've looked at how to locate our purchase order, and we've looked at there are different options available to create invoices and order confirmations. Next thing I'd like to do is to jump into the SAP proposals and questionnaires section. And to do that, we can click on the top left-hand corner where it says business network, and we can click on Ariba proposals and questionnaires. Okay, so once we're in the SAP proposals and questionnaires section, you'll notice the interface is a little different than the network, but everything is still neatly organized into different categories. The first category that's most important to you is going to be the events tab. Now, events are going to be the request for proposals and the request for questionnaires that you as a supplier are going to submit your quotations against. There's a couple of different statuses here. Open being open RFPs, where you still have the ability to respond to an event and submit your proposal to Ontario Power Generation. Pending selection are going to be closed events, where Ontario Power Generation is in the process of evaluating the bids and selecting a proponent. And then lastly, we have our completed events, where OPG has selected a successful supplier to award business to. In the sections below, you may see some questionnaires attached to your profile as well. You may see an existing supplier registration questionnaire. In this questionnaire, you'll see the details that you submitted to OPG during your onboarding registration setup. So you'll see your business's name, your addresses, banking information, tax information, diversity information, that entire response is stored here. And you have the ability to revise that response and update your company profile information at any time, and we'll capture the changes on our back end. The next questionnaire you may see is our equity, diversity, and inclusion certificate questionnaire. If you're an indigenous supplier or a diverse supplier and have indicated that to us during your onboarding registration process, we would have kicked off this questionnaire for you as well, where you're able to upload your diversity certificates and tie that to your profile. Again, you have the option to revise this response at any time. You can extend your registration, extend your certificate, or make, make any changes to your registration profile overall at any time. And this is really everything for the SAP proposals and questionnaire section. I just wanted to talk about one more important document that I'm linking in the description below, and that is the Ariba support guide for suppliers that was crafted by OPG's Ariba technical support team. 
This guide was made to assist suppliers experiencing difficulties with the SAP Ariba network while doing business with Ontario Power Generation. We've developed quick tutorial videos to address the most common frequently asked questions, including accessing a purchase order, submitting an invoice, supplier onboarding, general system navigation, best practices, and more. I really encourage all of our suppliers to read through this document first whenever you run into troubles with the platform, as it's highly likely we've already documented a solution. And if you've already read through this document and additional assistance is required, we do have a section below, contacts, escalations, and additional support, uh, where you'll see instructions on how to submit a ticket to either OPG's technical support team, OPG's accounts payable team, or SAP's Ariba technical support team to assist you in the issues that you're experiencing. So that is going to wrap up our basic navigation video of the SAP business network proposals and questionnaires module and our Ariba support guide. Links to our most helpful guides are going to be in the description below. Thank you for watching.